Hey, how about we check out a historic DC firehouse today? Hello and welcome to the Capital Luxury Update with Matt Cheney, a series of short videos showcasing the latest trends in the Capital Region's luxury real estate market. Hey folks, welcome back to the latest episode of the Capital Luxury Update. Today we're gonna check out a historic DC firehouse that's been turned into an Airbnb. We're gonna meet my friend, Mike Abenante. He's the owner. Welcome to the firehouse. Um, thank you for having us. Looking forward to the tour. Yeah, come on in guys. Okay, cool, let's do this. We have two units on the first floor, one we just passed, one on the front. We have a carriage house in the back. Those are all long-term units. Yeah. My unit's the upstairs that I Very use cool. as my primary as well as an Airbnb unit. Awesome. So let me show you that. The entryway starts right here at the beginning of the historic stairwell. Oh, this is, it's not reclaimed. This is like restored. This is original restored stairwell okay. from 130 years ago. Very cool. Yeah. It's held up to the test of time. I try to keep as much of the historic uh, significance in the property as possible. That's cool. Most people come here trying to live in a piece of history. So if yeah. you make it too modern yeah. and you lose the feel of the history, it doesn't work for them. That makes sense. So this is the Airbnb space, this is the entryway. Okay. We walk into the original room where they had the original lockers for the firefighters. Um, this is just a living room I set for the children or a TV room. Very There's cool. two more bedrooms and a bathroom out the side. Cutting into here. This how, how many total bedrooms are in this? Total bedrooms are five bedrooms, four bathrooms, two washer dryers, and one full kitchen, and two levels. Starting over, how many bedrooms? Five bedrooms. Five bedrooms. Four bathrooms. Four bathrooms. Two washers and dryers. Two washer and dryers. Two levels. Two levels. About 2,500 square feet. This is huge. Yeah, it's about 1,000 square foot private on the rooftop as well. Okay, wow. And then you walk into our original, our, this is our Instagram photo spot so in a sense if someone's lined up over here and you're sliding down the pole <laughs> you can actually look like you're sliding in the picture down the pole that's awesome this is the original photo i um, going back to the early 1900s of um, the fire company uh, in the garage downstairs uh, we that's open cool. this up into an office space you can create a you know workspace here um, there's another bedroom coming off this this is one of the bedrooms over here that was done by Jenny Border. for when people rent the the space how long are they here for uh, the average person stays for two to three nights. Okay. It's a two night minimum. Okay. I occasionally have events where they do one day or one night, usually on Sundays for okay. weddings and different events, Sunday fun days. Right. Uh, those are really popular. Brunches are popular here as well. That's cool. I try and keep it two days minimum and I entice people based on giving them a discount for two versus one. Okay. Um, but the average stays about three days. Okay. Yeah. And so walking out of the office way, we walk in the most dramatic room here. Wow, uh, this is 35 cool. foot ceiling, open living room, dining awesome. room, kitchen. Exposed beams, that's Exposed awesome. Exposed beams, uh, a lot of original woodwork here. That's we cool. have a $10,000 oven that's great for entertaining. It's actually a chef's blue star oven. That this, is very cool. This, this island is almost 10 feet long and four feet wide. How many wide. people can you sit here? One, two, three. You can fit like eight, eight people, people. at the awesome. island. So you can make this an open bar type of uh, you know buffet thing That's right, and cool. a lot of people really like to kind of be involved in the kitchen now yeah also the type of tenant that usually stays here are usually families okay or like you know groups of individuals that work together and they like to work together they like to do presentations they like to be involved they sometimes bring their own chefs to uh to have a culinary experience very cool and so caterers really like having open kitchens so is, this, is this like a little bit of a foodie experience for some people this, this is designed to be a foodie experience to be you know a chef's heaven okay and then when you bring it into the living room and past the beautiful windows. Absolutely. We're really trying to create um, a common element, a common area. So if you think about how many seats are in this room. Absolutely. And, and other seats you can bring in from other parts of the office and other rooms. We could have 30 people sitting in this room very comfortably with six feet space between them. So people use this for Super Bowl parties, I would assume, right? We actually had a Super Bowl party here. Um, All right. Yeah, there's a big uh, Tampa Bay fan who uh, <laughs> rented the house out for three days. <laughs> That's um, cool. The other thing I see a lot is people come for holidays. Uh, okay. Cherry Blossoms is booked like crazy for April. Absolutely, uh, that makes sense. Fourth of July is a big ticket item because we have a beautiful view of the monument. We haven't talked about work, but we're here in Shaw, right? So yes, this is, this is the middle of historic Shaw. Okay. We're at 10th and R Street Northwest between 9th and 10th. Um, we're three blocks off of Logan Circle. Three blocks from Logan Circle, which means we're also like, how many like restaurants are within, like, within walking distance of here? I think there's about 30 restaurants in walking distance. About eight of them are Michelin star restaurants. Okay. There's a ton of bars. Very there's nice. a ton of old places around here that have been here forever. Location. It's got a great neighborhood feel. Absolutely. Howard University is nearby. Cool. Um, goes back to early 1900s. Built in 1884. Okay. Uh, was shot by Gordon Parks, a famous uh, photographer. Do you have any copy or any examples of those photos? Um, actually, some, well, he took this photo on the top of the fire. He took this one? Place. This shows the entire fire company. That's cool. Um, kind of having their, uh, their drill start to give them the runaround. <laughs> uh, there's also a book somewhere in here. Here's one. Where it actually, we have all the pictures of the actual old firefighters. 
inside of the house and different parts of the rooms that they stayed in. And you can see like some of the, like, for instance, this is a room with the beds that were in here that we're standing in right now. Yeah. Um, this is in the garage. Have you happened to meet any uh, um, anybody who actually worked here, or their, if their dad worked here, or anything like I've that? I've only met Gordon Parks' family okay. in a foundation event who wanted to see the house. I gave them a tour because cool. they remember the photos that were taken by their father. That's cool. Um, but no, I don't know if any of the actual firefighters are still alive, honestly. It's I, been a little while, right? You think after the show they'd <laughs> resurface, so I think yeah. the answer is no, unfortunately. Okay. Well, it's, it's definitely a piece of history. Can we see upstairs? Yeah, sure. Let me All give right, you a cool. quick tour of the upstairs. So I actually added this uh, stairwell in as well. The only way to get into the third floor before was through the outside stairwell, which didn't make any okay. sense. So this is like a ton of space that just wasn't being used. Yeah, exactly. So we have two master bedrooms up here. So we built these really large um, barn doors, sliding doors as well to enter and exit. Very you see cool. all the exposed beams again. These kind of the dropped uh, Talk about Game you. of Thrones look in a Seriously. sense to the beginning. Absolutely. Talk about unique. You can't recreate this. Absolutely not. So going into the master bedroom, we again pay homage to the firefighters and some of the history of the property. That's cool. I built in a nice flat screen in here. I took the beams from between these beams to make this bed frame. That so really I couldn't cool. lift this if I tried, so it's very you, heavy. So did you build that yourself or did you have I had, a, a, I had a, one of my contractors, um, cabinets cool. uh, maker build it for us. Then we put a, a really nice bed here. This is kind of the honeymoon room. This yep. is a $10,000 uh, mattress on it. Is this the room that everybody fights over? That they this get is the have? room that I always tell the person who paid to <laughs> grab a meeting with their luggage when they check in. The organizer, this is your room. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. you can see there's no windows, but there's a ton of um, indirect light coming yeah. from the skylight. I can still add a window into it to make it a legal bedroom, but I don't really see the need. It's just kind of as great as it is. It's a cool space. Yeah, and I we like had some nice built-ins. And uh, if you want to come around, uh, I can show you the, uh, the bathroom that's attached to this as well. So we have a master bathroom that's also got a nice little sliding door. Very and nice. This is an awesome space. Yeah, so I took, uh, I took the original bathtub from downstairs, brought up here, resealed it to match the color colors so they look identical. But this is a new sink, and this is a 130-year-old tub. That's, and did you, that was in here on site. You found this elsewhere? or We found it here on site. It was on site, and we just redid it. That's and then awesome. we also redid the, uh, all of the, um, uh, what do you call it, the hardware. We actually rebronzed it so it matched the bronze look of these as well to well, kind of bring them all together. Absolutely. This has a little bit of a late diplomat feel to it. Is that it? It does. Like, they design? copied us. They copied you. Steven okay. Starr owes me a few. <laughs> but again, same beams we used for the shelves here. Okay. Just like we did for the bed. So okay. we, we reused a lot of the, um, of the materials as much as possible. You have a beautiful walk-in shower with rainwater Very and, cool. and dual, um, dual shower heads. We have a bit of a Godfather style toilet. Seriously. Yeah, you can hide the gun in the back <laughs> exactly. to take the cannoli. All right, so we have this, uh, we, we use kind of a good uh, urban look to it, but we kept it historic in a sense, and these old green colors really helped as well. That's cool. And just sitting in this bathtub and, you know, in a real claw foot, uh, you know, uh, cast iron bathtub, and looking at this, it's a beautiful skyline above is just amazing. So people, really people just cool. love this bathroom. This is they an awesome space, Mike. Yeah. Well done. Thank you very much. I, I think what everybody watching today really wants to know is how many funny stories do you have, or do you have any funny stories about owning the property that you can share? Um, well, I have a lot of interesting stories. Some I don't want to share, some I do. <laughs> Sometimes you get great tenants, whether you have these memorable situations that just keep coming back. One, for instance, one of the people I was hosting was it was for their birthday. And it was a top five executive. She asked me to do uh, to bring a chef in. I couldn't find a chef during COVID. This was last summer. Yeah. So I showed up as the chef, <laughs> and I brought and I brought a bushel of live blue shell crabs, and well I did done. a five course meal with live crabs to five That's some different customer courses. customer service there, Mike. Yeah, and I brought all the kids <laughs> into the kitchen. We all set up stools, and I cooked with the whole family. It turned into just an Airbnb stay. It's an Airbnb stay and an Airbnb experience Absolutely. to eventually getting a $400 cash tip for my services. Right, that's but awesome. That, that's that was a just really story. unique thing that happened during COVID especially, and they were yeah. just so appreciative of the, that's of cool the attention they got to detail. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to give us a tour of your awesome DC firehouse. It's been a lot of fun, thank you. My pleasure, thanks for coming, Matt. Absolutely, thank you for having us. Peace, have See a good you, one. Bud. Thank you for joining us for the Capital Luxury Update.